Hello, this is the next video on a playlist I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And here we're going to look at the distribution of the sufficient statistic that comes from a one parameter exponential family. The theorem says let xi, you know, i goes from 1 to n, be iid from a one parameter exponential family. And the uh, distribution, you know, PMF or PDF, can be written in this form here. And then where the support does not depend upon theta, and theta, you know, lives in some omega space, which is a subset of the real numbers. Then T star, which is the sum of these uh, T of XI's, that's this piece here. And perhaps I should have an XI on there. This is sufficient for theta. And the PDF or PMF of T star is of this form here, where you know this to the nth power, this is the same, this is just little t, and then this is some function of just t. Now one note here is really, you know, this distribution function is thought of as the probability that t star is equal to little t given theta. And then as a density, we write it just g of little t. But really, it's, you know, it's the probability that t star is equal to t. So here's the proof. The first <coughs> section is pretty quick. The joint distribution of the x's is the product of each marginal. And so we're taking this product, you know, so we get n of these. And then this piece here is just the product of h of 1, h2, h3 etc. And then this piece, since it's E, you add the exponents and that's constant in regards to the x's. So these are just summed. And then by the Fisher name and factorization theorem, and I have it in quotes because I have a video called Fisher name and factorization, which proves that if we can factor it as a, as a, a function of the thetas and the data, but only through this sufficient statistic, and then a function of just the x's alone, that proves this statistic <coughs> is sufficient for theta. And then we're finished. So now to prove this piece, there's sort of two ways to think about it. You know, if x is discrete or x is continuous. <coughs> so let's let x be discrete first. And we're going to create a, a set, a of t, which is all, all the axes. So remember, this is a vector, x1, x2, xn, such that the sum of these statistics is equal to little t. So these x's are, you know, x, so I wrote it a of t, so it's a function of t. So these x's are a function of t. So if we change this value of t, these x's change based upon that value. Now the PMF of T star, which is our sufficient statistic, the sum of these T's, is this. So it's the probability that T star is equal to T, you know, given theta, which is we just write the PMF like this, right? So we, that little T here. And so it's the original PMF summed over all possible X's such that those combinations equal t, you know, and, and that's based upon this sufficient statistic here. Now, this product, um, we said, was, you know, it looked like this. This is the joint distribution function. So, we stick this in here. And this is summed over the x's, so there's some constants. So this is constant and can be taken out front. Um, this e part, um, this set doesn't involve the x's, but every set of x's that are in a of t, this is always equal to little t. For every, so every term is constant and can be taken out of the sum. And that's what this piece is. So what's left over is this. It's the sum of this product. But remember we said the x's are a function of t. So this piece right here can be thought of as a function of t. You know where the, the vector lives in a of t. 
Now, going from here to here, I think it will help if we do an example. And so I, I do a discrete example of a Poisson distribution at the end. But that's what we wanted to show. That's the first part of the proof. And so this double slash means that you've proved something in your proof and it deserves double slashes and so we prove the discrete case but it's not the finished part of the proof uh, we'll use like a box you know or QED to finish the proof but the double slash means a piece of the proof has been proved so let's let X be continuous and we're going to let our sufficient statistic be T1 which is the sum of these as, we, as described in part 1 it's sufficient for theta and we're going to assume that T is one-to-one -one and has this so and has an inverse and then we're going to define n minus one other uh, variables T2 which is just X2 and T3 is X3 all the way to TN is XN now let's back solve for X1 so there's no X1's in these it's only in this so if we take out the first term and then keep the sum the second and, and subtract that sum to the other side we get this piece and then since t is 1 to 1 we take its inverse to solve for x1 so x1 is equal to this piece here so next we want to derive the Jacobian of our transformation so we want to find the joint density for t1, t2, t3 all the way to tn and I have a video called Derivatives of Inverse Trig Functions and there we derive in, in, in great detail how to take derivatives of inverse functions and so if you're unfamiliar with that I'd recommend watching this video <coughs> so here, here we want to take the derivative or the partial of x1 with respect to t1 and so there, that's this piece. And these are T2, T3, T4. So what it is, is since this is an inverse function, it's the derivative of T, and then evaluated at this whole piece right here. So we plug it in. Now the chain rule is only in regards to this inner piece. So the partial of T1 with the... With the um, yeah, the derivative of T1 is just 1. And so this is the partial of X1 with respect to T1. Now, next, we're also going to have to do the partial of X1 with respect to T2, and then T3, etc. But it ends up that it's not needed, so we're not going to do it. But here, the partial of X2, you know, or all the way to Xn, in regards to T1 or T2 all the way to N, is either 1 or 0, right? The partial of, of x2 with respect to t1 is 0, but if x t, partial of x2 with respect to t2 is 1. And that's what this is saying here. So in a picture, well, more picture-like, I guess, um, it's this. So the Jacobian is the determinant of this matrix. And this is the partial of x1 with respect to t1. This is partial of x1 with respect to tn and we do that for each x all the way down but let's look at this bottom part first these were all zero and then the diagonals were one right this is a partial of x2 with respect to t2 so that's one anyway so this becomes the identity matrix and this piece here you know we, is what it is but this we derived we don't need these because we, when we take the determinant we can go down this piece and this makes them all zeros so this is diagonal up, you know, upper diagonal so it's the product of these diagonals which ends up just being this piece right here <clears throat> which is this so the joint density for X, T1 through Tn is the original density, joint density <clears throat> But instead of evaluating it x1 through xn, we back solve for what they are. So for x1, we would always plug in this. For x2, we'd plug in t2, x3, we'd plug in t3, etc. 
this times the absolute value of the Jacobi. Well, the general form of the density looks like this. And then don't forget the absolute value of the Jacobi. But these X's, we have to plug in, you know, the inverse, what we solve for them up here. And now note that this is always in terms of T1, right? That's the, the density. Now to find the density for T1, we have to integrate out T2 through Tn. <clears throat> and that's what we're doing here. So notice this piece is, is constant in regards to T2 through Tn. And here there's no T2 or T3, etc. So it's constant. And we're left with this piece here. And, and these are functions of T2 through Tn, right? If we back solve for what these x's are and then plug them in, we're going to get T2 through, you know, T1, T2, T3, etc. And here, this is a function of all the T1s. But when we integrate out T2 through Tn, only T1 is left. So this is really a function of T1. And then so these come down and then this function is a function of T1. Well that's what we wanted to show the general form of. This is the general form of the density for this sufficient statistic. And so we've proved the theorem. Now let's look at an example. <coughs> Let X be Poisson. So the uh, PMF is this of a Poisson, but it's not in general uh, exponential form. So th this piece comes down, the x comes down, and here if we take e to the log of this, you know the e and the log cancel, but if we think e and then this is the log of lambda raised to the ei, that xi, right? instead of being an exponent, can be out front. And then this is of the general form of an exponential, right? The C of lambda is, is e to the minus lambda. Q is lambda, or the log of lambda. T of xi is just xi. And then H is this piece here. It's 1 over xi factorial. So from the theorem, our sufficient statistic, T star, is the sum of these x's. And we want to let T star equal a value, call it little t. And we create a set at A of t where our support is. So all the x's, greater than or equal to zero, such that the sum is little t. Right? And so then the distribution of t is of this form which we just proved. Now the only tricky part in this theorem is, is this last one. Right? C to the n raised to the n, that's easy. And then e to the q, we just plug that in and we just put a little t there. And so this is some function of t. So this is a tricky part. So let's look at this in more detail. So let's examine h star of t. But, but first note this multinomial theorem. If we have a polynomial x or not or uh, yeah tuple in tuple um, x a1 plus x a2 plus all the way to a n raised the teeth power that's equal to this sum so those a's are here it's a product and it's raised to some number x1 x2 xn and then we have t factorial and then the product of these factorials but it's summed over all possible x's that live in A of T. So the they um, they they equal T. So this is actually a polynomial theorem. And I think I proved it in I have a video called um, Binomial Theorem, I think. I'll I'll find out what it is and put it in the description. So anyway, we're gonna assume this is true, but it's been proved in one of my videos. So now let's let a1 through an equal 1. So then 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 up to n, that equals n raised to the t. That's what this piece right here is. Now this sum, so these is a, or the 1, 1, 1, you know, raised to a number, that's all 1. 
and one time something, you know, like, like we can ignore these. And this sum is over x's, so that t star, or t factorial, is constant, so it can be taken out, and then divided to the other side, which is what this is. So then what's left is this sum times the product of these 1 over xi factorials. So this is equal to this. Okay, so thus, h star, which we said we define like this, which is what this is, is equal to n of t, t. Now note that it is a function of t. So f of t is this. So it's this raised to the nth power, e of, and then this is q of lambda t times t, times, you know, this function of t, which is this. Now notice here, the log of lambda, that t can be taken to the lambda, and then the e and the log cancel, leaving just lambda the t. And then lambda t and n to the t can be combined into la n lambda t. And then this comes down, and then uh, what's left here is just divided by t factorial. But this is the density for a Poisson. So thus t star, the sum of the xi's, is Poisson in lambda. And that's what we know, and that's, of course, that's what we just showed that the theorem holds. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.